Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for an update on the Center for Financial Planning WIN Advocate Program. I'm Kathleen McQuiggan, Special Advisor to the Center on Gender Diversity, and I'm joined today on this webinar by Marilyn Morham Gillis, who's Executive Director of the Center. Today's agenda includes a brief update on the Center for Financial Planning, we'll go through the women's initiatives in place, and then we'll have three WIN advocates share their experiences. This webinar is being recorded, and if you have questions during our session, please submit them via the online Q&A box that appears at the bottom of your screen. You can enter your question anytime during this presentation, and we will address them at the end of the speakers. And with that, Marilyn, I'll turn it over to you to get us started. Thanks, Kathleen, and welcome to everyone. Uh, we're very pleased uh, to have Kathleen serving now as our subject matter expert on uh, our WIN initiatives. Uh, she took over from Eleanor Blaney, who retired uh, this past year. Uh, many of you may know her. Uh, Kathleen was a member of our inaugural WIN Council, formed in 2014, and she is a champion for women's uh, issues. Uh, prior to joining us, she was Senior Vice President of Global uh, women's strategies for Pax World Management, and uh, she is consulting with us part-time. She's also uh, growing her uh, financial planning practice at Artemis Financial Advisors, so very happy to have Kathleen on board. Uh, so the Center for Financial Planning, a very quick update. Uh, we launched the center three years ago this month. Uh, with a very bold mission to create a more diverse and sustainable financial planning profession and an even more inspiring mission um, so that all Americans have access to competent and ethical financial planning advice. Uh, CFP board sits at the crossroads uh, of firms, our 82,000 CFP professionals. We have 55,000 folks in, in the pipeline who have raised their hand and said, I'm interested, and close to 200 in colleges and universities. And we're uniquely positioned uh, to serve as, as a convener on uh, addressing some systemic challenges facing the profession. So I think all of you are on board because you know the, the, the challenging uh, statistic regarding women. We're at 23%. That's been static for over 10 years now, uh, notwithstanding the fact that we had a record number of new women certificates last year. Uh, we're, we're still not uh, moving that relative percentage. Uh, we also have a um, uh, low number of black and Latino CFP professionals at 3.5%, more CFP professionals over the age of 70 than under the age of 30, and a dire shortage of faculty. So the center is focused on three major priorities. We're going to focus on gender diversity on this call. Um, but uh, moving forward, um, three major priorities. Uh, more, how can we get more women, more people of color? How can we get younger people into the profession? And then how can we build uh, the um, uh, academic discipline of financial planning such that uh, our programs achieve more recognition and, and uh, stature in our colleges and universities so that students uh, can be attracted to our programs and graduate from our programs. Our focus is going to be on, uh, on this call, certainly on the uh, WIN initiatives, but we made a significant step forward uh, in advancing racial and ethnic diversity uh, this year. We established a diversity advisory group, uh, conducted research similar to the research that we did in gender diversity. We presented that research uh, and, a, um, and released the thought leadership paper at a diversity summit that we just held last week in New York City. Uh, and uh, I can say that the over 300 attendees at the summit uh, were extraordinarily engaged and motivated uh, towards action to uh, advance diversity in the profession. Uh, so we are uh, happy to send you uh, a copy of the thought leadership paper uh, after the call and would encourage you to take a look at that as well. So let me um, hand it back over to Kathleen, who is going to talk in a little bit more detail about the women's initiatives of the center. Thank you, Marilyn. The women's, initiatives were, the women's initiative was established over five years ago. 
under the leadership of our WIN Council Chair, Nancy Kitzner, and our Advisory Council, which you see pictured here, which is comprised of experts in the areas of women's issue, issues, diversity, recruitment, as well as leaders from the financial planning and advisory firms, and also includes CFP board registered programs. And our council's goal is to help advise and assist the center team in the development of efforts to increase the number of women entering the financial planning profession, including the number of women CFP professionals. In addition to my role that Marilyn outlined early on this call, I've spent a good portion of my time this year participating in the industry events, sharing the resources and work of the center, and trying to recruit, retain, and advance more women in the financial planning profession. We participated in four different cities with Investment News with their Women Advisor Summits and talked about diversity in our profession. We also met with WIN advocates in various cities, pictured here with some WIN advocates in Nashville. And we also support a lot of our registered programs. The University of Akron's an example uh, where they hosted a diversity and women's symposium focused on financial planning as a profession targeting career influencers. So as you can see, uh, there are a lot of different efforts in place to help advance women in this profession. Our research white paper entitled Making More Room for Women in the Financial Planning Profession highlighted the findings of a comprehensive study that we conducted to try to identify the causes of what we called the feminine famine in financial planning. The two main obstacles identified from our study for why not more women were entering financial planning were one, the lack of awareness of financial planning as a profession and also misperceptions about what financial planners actually do. And then secondly, the unfriendly firm culture that exists in some financial services organizations. A silver lining I would highlight from the study that I wanted to share with all of you is that the research also found that there was a very significant difference in career satisfaction between women who are CFP professionals and women in financial services who do not hold the certification. And that was that 72% of women CFP professionals reported that they were satisfied with their career in comparison of women without the certification, only 46% of those women uh, cited satisfaction. So this study is posted on our website. We're happy to share that with you. As Marilyn mentioned, this study was done uh, when we launched WIN five years ago, and we just launched our um, broader diversity research white paper last week, and we can share that with you. The white paper also included recommendations for attracting more women to financial planning and making the profession itself more attractive to women. And as you can see here on this slide, from some of the strategies that we've implemented through some of our programs uh, include introducing financial planning earlier in education programs, also making sure that women leaders in financial planning are more visible uh, to girls and women in other professions. And we also found that creating a mentorship program to encourage women uh, was also proven to be a valuable strategy. We also have initiatives that the CFP board is undertaking to address this problems, and that's really engaging uh, firms, top management, to make sure that they have a commitment to measurable gender diversity goals. And we're also continuing to encourage firms to adopt more transparent compensation structures and to alter, offer alternative forms of compensation uh, to entry-level employees, to name a few of our findings. But we're happy to go into more details on any of those um, items if people would like to talk further. I did want to highlight we have a uh, really uh, deep bench of resources for all of you that I'm going to go through a few uh, that you may or may not be familiar with. The first, uh, I am a CFP Pro campaign, highlights the benefits of a career in financial planning among young people, women, and people of color through a series of impactful videos social media posts, and customizable presentations and materials that can be used by CFP professionals and even schools really to educate young people about financial planning careers. We have three CFPs pictured here, Brittany, Rianca, and Jason, that share their stories 
on what they do as certified financial planners, once again, really helping to grow this awareness component of, of our offering. We also had, have implemented a successful mentoring program. The CFP mentoring program, which you may have received notification on, was recently expanded from our successful win-to-win -win mentoring program that we launched in 2016. The CFP board launched the initial win-to-win -win mentoring to connect aspiring female CFP professionals with established CFP professionals for guidance and support as they pursue their careers in financial planning and their CFP certification. In the first two years of the Win to Win program, it's led to over 1,600 engagements between mentors and mentees and have provided candidates with invaluable information on the certification process. Given the success of the Win to Win program, as I said, it's recently been expanded so all CFP professionals can serve, can serve as mentors and mentees um, our mentor, menteeship is now available to everyone as well. And as you can see here, cfp.net slash mentor is where you can go to find more information as well. A new initiative that we recently launched last year specifically for women was in the area of workforce development. Our financial planner reentry pilot program helps support firms in establishing return to work internships for experienced professional women looking to re-enter the workforce. The first cohort uh, was launched last year and that included 11 paid return to work internships which resulted in 10 interns converting to full-time employees. We are launching our second cohort this month with seven firms and we're very excited about this program. We are also encouraging individuals and firms to utilize the Career Center. This is, this is something that has been put in place where we have more than 2,800 employers that have posted jobs, more than 3,200 job seekers having posted their resumes, and more than 4,600 jobs that have been posted. I also uh, will highlight we have a biannual online career fair providing employers and prospective employees with an opportunity to, to recruit and apply for positions virtually as well, and we've gotten a lot of good feedback on both of those programs. And now I'll turn to really kind of the focus of this webinar today, which is our WIN Advocate Program. We established this as one of the outcomes of our initial research two years ago as a way for CFP professionals designated by the CFP board who are looking to get engaged in their communities to get the word out about financial planning and how it can be a rewarding career for women. Today, we have over 500 advocates in over 44 states spreading the message. And I will say advocates are both men and women, and we're excited for many of you that are joining us today that might be hearing about this program for the first time. This program is meant to be a platform for you to tell your story, why you became a CFP professional to audiences of girls, professional women, and students. It's meant to help you identify opportunities to speak at professional conferences and networking events. And the CFP board will also pass along local speaking opportunities when we get inquiries uh, for when advocates to be speaking. We also use this program to help raise awareness within your own firm about when and the importance of gender diversity in our profession. We've seen some WIN advocates write articles for newsletters or their membership organizations they belong to uh, talking about their involvement in WIN. And we also have social media uh, tips that we can share with you so you can spread the word about your own WIN engagement. On this slide, you'll see three of our partners that we've been working with Forte Foundation, which is an organization that focuses on launching women into successful, into fulfilling and significant careers in business. Their community is comprised of undergrad, pre-MBA, and post-MBA women of over 100,000 strong. And we are also working with two high school-based programs, Rock the Street, Wall Street, and Invest in Girls, that teach high school girls financial concepts 
exposes them to professional women role models, and sparks them into considering potentially financial services uh, as a career opportunity. And if you're interested in signing on as a WIN mentor, uh, cfp.net slash WIN advocate is where you can go to register. So in addition to the tools and resources I've mentioned earlier, including the mentoring program, the I am a CFP Pro campaign collateral, and our career center, we have put together a toolkit for those participating in the WIN Advocate program. For those of you that are, have already been engaged in WIN, you'll be glad to know that we have an updated and refined presentation for general and professional audiences that you can use that talks about financial planning. What is it? The value of a CFP certification and how someone can become a CFP. It's adaptable for a wide range of audiences, and it also allows you to customize some slides to share your own individual stories. We have additional collateral, including flyers on I'm a CFP Pro, Four Steps to Certification. We also have a sample outreach letter and some social media strategy suggestions for you. And I'll highlight pictured here on the screen, too, is a great one-pager of resources for aspiring CFP professionals that list all of the resources available to them. And I'd highlight one that we're not going to spend a lot of time on, but we're happy to go further on, would be the scholarships that have been established to help get more diversity in the financial planning profession. So with that overview of the WIN program, um, I'm excited to um, have some guests join us today that are WIN advocates that are going to um, talk about their own WIN experience. Uh, Pam Horak, uh, who is from Pathfinder, Pathfinder Planning, is joining us, as well as Aaron Voison, who is from EP Wealth. And um, we're going to start with Pam, who's based out of North Carolina. And Pam, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to hearing a bit more about uh, your story of career day at an elementary school. Thank you very much, Kathleen, for um, hosting this, and to Marilyn for um, all the work that you do for the WIN program. Um, as I've started to grow more and more as a CFP, I am seeing firsthand uh, how we don't have enough women. It used to be we just talked about it, but once I was actually in the, the CFP world, I actually saw it. And when I started uh, my firm, my children were very small, so um, I would get asked to do a lot of things at school, and I'm still asked to do a lot of things in school. And one of the things that um, would come up every year was career day. So I started going to career day to find out uh, what I could, what they were looking for, and what I could tell the students there that would encourage them to become CFPs because. Um, we, we need more as a whole, but we definitely want to focus on uh, women and, and minorities and people who are underrepresented in this area. So um, when I went in, I noticed um, off the bat the careers that were represented were things like veterinarians, and they would bring a horse to school. The policemen would have their police car outside. The martial arts um, instructor would show kids how to break a board. And I thought, wow, these are you know great flashy things. How do you explain financial planning so it's fun and interesting and not boring and blah? So um, I had to come up with a way to kind of capture uh, the attention of these younger children. And I started um, really in fourth and fifth grade, and I've actually done this a similar presentation for middle schoolers, and I'm looking forward to moving into high school next year. As my kids move that direction, I will uh, move career day uh, with them. So um, one of the things I came up with is um, this financial planning tower. And I actually use this in every facet of my firm, it is my way of coming up with a planning philosophy that I could actually explain to people, show them a little bit about how planning works, and give them an idea of what planners do. So um, we would focus on this very bottom level, the, the physiological level, so to speak, of income, expenses, emergency fund, 
and then we move into talking about um, the safety level of having some additional funds available, insurance, estate planning, and then moving up to where there's more investments involved with your retirement funding and education. But our planning didn't really end there. It kind of moved into talking a little more about what people truly wanted uh, to do in their life, what they were put here on earth to do, so to speak, and how they can work towards those goals. And then as far as their legacy, we wanted people to be able to um, have an idea of what, you know, what are people going to say about them when they're gone. And then down at the bottom, we also talk about debt and how that can starve your tower. You cannot build your tower up if you are constantly filling in this hole of debt. So this visual was a good start for going into the schools and talking about what financial planners do. So I talked to my fifth grader, and he, I showed him what I was going to do, and he said, no, 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 mom, you have to involve everyone. He was very specific. So he helped me come up with a good presentation to do that, to show kids more about what financial planning is and to include them. So we created um, a, a kind of a good visual for them where I would take uh, blocks, wooden blocks, and build this type of financial planning tower and show them what that was and talk about it as I put the blocks on top. And then I would put the debt blocks underneath it and we would watch the whole tower fall off. So kids got an idea of, wow, using debt can really derail my entire tower. There's nothing left. It throws it off. So that was actually a powerful visual for um, these, these children. Another thing that we did during career day was to take a treasure chest, and I put a little miscellaneous financial things in there. I had a little block with you know, that looked like a house and a little car and kids from the life game and those fake credit cards that come in the mail. I collect all those things and put them in my treasure chest. And I had the um, kids go through and pull something out. So I let them know that, um, you know, what, what you pull out of that retirement chest is what you put into it. So if you're pulling cash out at the end, that means you've put cash into it along the way. And that's one of the things that planners help with. So I also had them um, shake their magic eight ball and ask them some questions uh, about that. I would ask, do you have enough money to pay all your bills this month? And they would shake the magic eight ball and it would say, Sources say no. So we would talk about some of those, and those were fun. Um, but I would let them know, you know, planner help people to determine their goals. And you, more than often, you know, you need more than just a yes or no answer for things. And then we would also roll the dice to talk a little bit about um, risk and show them, you know, oh, can you, can you beat the bank, so to speak? Um, if you roll more than my number, then you win. How did it feel when you won? How did you feel when you lost? Sometimes that's the risk we take, so we talked about that. And then to wrap up, we talked about the um, how to become a certified financial planner, and we focused on the four E's, education, exam, experience, and ethics. And then I would encourage the girls in the, in the room and just let them know that this is a growing career field where we focus on relationships and helping others. There are often flexible hours, and it's a respected profession where you can earn good money. So the girls in the classroom would come away thinking, oh, you know, she not one time did she talk about math, and not that those girls aren't good at math because they are good at math, but there's so much more to it than just the math. So I felt like um, at the end of this, it was a very good experience for me. Uh, the kids, even nowadays when I go to the school, they'll say, oh, I remember you came in and showed us the blocks. And those are things that resonate and stick with them. So I would encourage you, if you're going to do career day, make it interactive, make it fun, make it memorable, and something that those kids can take away. So thank you very much for letting me share my experience, and I'm going to turn it back to Kathleen now. Pam, thank you very much. And um, the next story I want to share, unfortunately, Cam Barsness, who is a principal at Kutcher, Benner, Barsness, and Stevens in Seattle, was unable to join this call. But 
Cam had reached out to me and um, was willing to share some of her tips as she put together uh, a WIN Advocate Initiative uh, in her hometown, really focused at the college level. So in May of this year, Cam presented at two personal financial planning classes at Central Washington University. She was in front of 100 plus freshmen to talk about financial planning, what it means to be a CFP, and how anyone interested could pursue a career in financial planning. And Cam's advice on how to get started if you wanted to do something similar in your local community, she said like any other business, she defined her target market, she researched the players in the field, and then started marketing by calling these um, institutions and reaching out to them. She decided she wanted to focus on college-age students, so she started reviewing all the local and semi-local colleges. She found ones that had finance clubs or women in business organizations, um, and she also tried to identify any places she might already know some professors. Like a good planner, she put all this into a spreadsheet so she could reference it and essentially created a prospect list. And the first school she reached out to was Central Washington University, and she said she um, did so because they had just recently launched a financial planning major that was certified with the CFP board to fulfill the education requirement. And so what she did is we helped her customize an email introduction, and she said like a good like any good marketer, she spammed the entire finance department, and she got two responses, one from a professor and one from the chair of the department. And that led to her presenting to these two classes this spring. She's also joined their advisory council on financial planning, and she offered up a couple quick tips for you that might be interested in pursuing this. The first, she said, was to focus. Focus on where your passion points are, or why you became an advisor, and excuse me, shout from the top of the mountains as to why you wanted to be a financial planner. Number two, she said know yourself. If you don't like talking in front of large groups, <clears throat> you can easily talk for 20 to 30 minutes, but you can also get a partner to work with you. And lastly, she said offer more. We all know through life the personal interaction and mentors have changed us, Therefore, at every class, she offers to follow up with students if they have any interest. So I want to thank Cam for her thoughts, even though she couldn't join us here today. And next, I'd like to turn it over to Erin Boyson while she shares what her firm is doing. Erin? Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Kathleen and Marilyn, for letting me participate. I am so excited to share with you all on the call a lot about what we're doing at EP because I think it really resonates with a lot of what's already been shared on the webinar so far. So, you know, what we started a little over two and a half years ago at EP was our women's initiative. And we're a rapidly growing firm. And with that came just a lot of, you know, growing pains. But what we really found were that the women of our firm needed you know, they needed an outlet. They needed a space to come talk to, to feel like they had support, just to share what's happening at the firm, ideas they had. So it started with a lunch, and it has blossomed into a full initiative, which I'll talk a lot about what we do. But our three kind of main goals are to focus on our colleagues, our clients, and our community. And we list them in this order pretty specifically. And with colleagues, really the mission here to tie into the Win Advocate program is to make sure that the women of EP Wealth feel that they have a career path, feel that they have support, and to help develop a mentorship program within our entire firm so that when women have different career goals, they have someone to turn to at the firm that can really help them blossom into that role. And an example of that came out of our women's initiative. It was one of our first lunches, and Lynn Ballou, who's one of our advisors here, ask the group, you know, has anyone here ever thought about being an advisor? And one of our client service associates, you know, kind of sheepishly raised their hand and said, you know, I actually have thought about it. And I think it was that lunch that it really just all of a sudden took for her to realize, I actually do want to do this. And from that, we threw our support around her. She put herself into the CFP program. She's going to be taking the CFT soon and is going to actually be on the path to being an advisor. And none of that would have ever happened if she hadn't felt like she had the support and allyship of just her colleagues. With our clients, we're obviously trying to make sure that they understand, you know, the importance of working with women in the, or in the field. 
But what I'll focus on a lot is the community, the outreach that we're doing. So as we go to the next slide, I'll kind of show all the different ways in which EP Wealth is out there advocating specifically to bring and retain women in this profession. And the biggest initiative we've done in the last year is our financial literacy outreach. This has been something that started in our women's initiative as just, um, let's try this out. We had an opportunity. It was actually a female intern of ours who said, hey, a teacher at my old high school asked me if you would be willing to come in and talk about financial planning and what you all do. So we took it to the women's initiative and said, who's interested in doing this? And there were about seven of us that raised our hand. So we kind of ad hoc just threw a presentation together, built some handouts, and went to this high school and did a presentation. And the excitement and adrenaline that we felt after leaving that presentation was one that, you know, I can only describe to you if you've actually go through the process yourself because it was really exciting. And it was exciting for a lot of different reasons. One, it was exciting because we got to explain as females why we're financial planners, why we got into this industry, why we're doing what we're doing. We got to talk about financial literacy, which is just something that is missing in so many schools today. And three, we got to hear from the students, you know, what are they, what questions are they asking? What's on their mind? And from that, we decided that, hey, this is something that not only are we passionate about, but there's a need for it. So we reached out to the entire firm and just said, hey, if you have a connection in a school, you know, put us in touch with them. We'd love to present our financial literacy outreach. And so one program quickly turned into 10. And it was really just a snowball and a domino effect. And with each presentation we did, based on the questions that we were getting asked, we kept adding to our presentation. So if we realized we didn't ask the right, you know, have the right slide, we added it to the next one. And so now going into this school year, we were better prepared. So we actually we did programs for everyone from first grade all the way, all the way to high school. So we definitely had to cater the presentation kind of similar to Pam did. You know, talking to first graders versus talking to people in high school, you're going to present financial planning a little differently. So we had to create really three different presentation styles based on the, you know, the group that we were talking to. So for high schoolers and for middle schoolers, one thing that we did stress in there was we talk about different, you know, apps that are out there on the phone to kind of help drive the mission. But what we end each and every presentation with is a career section. And in that section, we go through all the different career opportunities that are available in the financial services world. We talk about the CFP designation. We have statistics, you know, a lot of what's already been shared about the number of CFPs out there, getting more women into it. And then based on our region, we actually specifically did research and went through to find all the different college programs that have financial planning programs so that we can tell them, if anything we've said to you today interests you and you're headed into college soon, here are some colleges you may want to take a look at because you could actually graduate with your certificate in financial planning, go enter the workforce and get your CFP pretty quickly. So we target a lot of teachers. We did a lot of career days, so similar to Pam, um, the, the career days are a big hit because, again, they're not getting a lot of female financial planners who are raising their hand saying, we'll come talk. And similar to what they already said about statistics is we find that the teachers, they want this so badly. Not one teacher that we've reached out to has turned us away. They reach out again. When can you come back? They're referring us to other schools where they know teachers at. So it's really something that's taken off a lot faster than we thought it would. And from that outreach, we actually developed an externship program. So we already have a summer internship program where we bring in college students to get a taste of the financial services world. They rotate through all the different departments at our firm. But what came out of our high school and middle school outreach was our externship program. It, last summer we did this for the first time, and we invited, we had about eight high school students who came in for really kind of a two-day crash course in the financial services world. We actually had our interns help us develop this program, and they come and learn everything from all the different departments. They learn uh, interview skills, resume building, work, workplace etiquette, 
how to talk, how to respond to emails. They met with the directors of every department. They played a stock market game. They did a Jeopardy game based on financial planning. And the best part about it was we had so many females take part of it. And now it's really become our mission to turn those female externs into summer interns and eventually hopefully into associates. As I mentioned earlier, another big kind of success of ours was our junior advisor pathway for some of the females in our firm. You know, really showing them and giving them that mentor support internally that if this is something you want to pursue, you have a group of people here who are going to support you and help you along the way. Another great avenue to pursue in terms of getting out there uh, to young ladies, to girls, to talk about what we do is the Girl Scouts. So just a couple weeks ago, we met with a troop they actually have a financial literacy badge. So we did a presentation for them on budgeting and saving and investing. And they asked great questions. And because of that presentation, they now get an extra badge. So if you know any Girl Scout troops or have nieces that are part of Girl Scouts, daughters, neighbors, definitely reach out because they will take you up on this very quickly. Uh, the next three are really the YWCA Girls, Inc., and then the YMF and UCLA. These are all different organizations where women of our firm have actually gone out and put on workshops specifically geared towards women, all about financial planning and all about careers in this industry. Kathleen touched on Invest in Girls earlier. This is a program that we are actually looking to partner with. So we've reached out to a couple of the teachers that we did programs with last year to actually see if they'd like to implement their program. And then networking with a local college. So this local college actually puts on a financial literacy camp in the summer. And they do two weeks for girls and one week for boys. And so this has allowed us an opportunity to come down and help volunteer and be a part of that week for them. So we've done a lot as a firm. You know, This has really just blossomed over the last year. And we have so many more ideas coming forward in 2019 that I could put about 10 more slides on here. But really, it's been great because I've watched the women of my firm really take hold of these different initiatives and just blossom into leaders, into speakers. And so I think if you work for a firm, you know, definitely internally start there. Look at the ladies who are maybe in positions where they're not advisors yet or they're not planners yet, but maybe that's a career goal. They're going to be the ones that I would start with to see what are your career goals and how can I help you achieve them. And if not, the financial literacy outreach, it's one, just really fun, and two, it's a great way to get out there in front of women to get them into this industry. So coming soon, we're going to have a website page all about our women's initiative, but anyone is free to contact me about any follow-up questions about anything that we're doing. I'm happy to share. So Kathleen, I will turn it back. Great. And just as a reminder, if you have any questions, please feel free for either Pam, Erin, uh, Marilyn, or myself. You can enter them at the bottom of your screen. And Marilyn, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Pam and Erin, for sharing all of the great work you're doing as uh, WIN advocates. So inspirational to uh, hear about the work and hear about the initiatives. Uh, we would love to hear from everyone else on the call. Uh, what, what are you doing if you are already a WIN advocate? Uh, share your story, share your activity, uh, and we would love to share it with the group. You can do that uh, by emailing us. We're also here uh, to get your ideas on how we can better support you in the work that you're doing as a WIN advocate. Uh, so we're going to uh, take a little bit of time here and uh, uh, have comments or questions or input from the rest of you on the phone about how we can support you and the work that you're doing. For those of you who are not a WIN advocate, uh, please consider signing up today by going to cfp.net slash WIN advocate. Uh, essentially, uh, we qualify you as an advocate. Uh, all you have to do is be a CFP professional. You can be male or female, and then we make available all of the tools that Kathleen uh, mentioned uh, to you. Uh, so uh, at this point in time, I'd like to turn it back over to Kathleen, who's going to monitor our Q&A uh, session and input session. So please feel free 
questions, input, comments? How can we help? Kathleen? Thanks, Marilyn. So we've had a, a few questions coming in here. Um, uh, Pam, maybe I'll start with you. Um, a, a few folks also interested in other ideas around the Girl Scouts, and um, Aaron mentioned one badge. Um, I think, Pam, you also had uh, worked on another badge. Could you just talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, the Girl Scouts uh, support financial planning at multiple different levels. And I actually did go in and speak with a group who was earning their junior business owner badge. And I think they were in um, third grade. That seems to be right, third and fourth grade, right in that area. And um, so we just did a, a one hour, it was basically a big discussion where we talked about the CBAs of business. So instead of ABCs, we turned it around a little bit. And um, it was more focused on business than it was on um, financial planning as a whole, but planning always plays into that. So we talked about C, we talked about clients, that was the first thing they needed. And then B was for business, how are they going to run their business? And then A was for advertising or marketing. So those were the three big things that we discussed. And um, at the end of that, there was a couple more things I think that the leaders were working on, with them on, and they were able to um, to get their junior business owner badge. So um, even if you don't see anything at you know a younger age, if you see something at an older age, I love Erin's. Um, outreach into the community and the internship and the externship um, and speaking with the, the colleges. There are so many different um, places that are looking for people to encourage uh, girls and women to go into financial planning and to find right careers for them. There are places for, that we can all go and speak. Great. Thank you, Pam. Erin, um, someone's written in that, that they are are tasked with creating a diversity and inclusion effort in their own firm and looking for a place to start. Uh, you've put together a, a super comprehensive, very detailed plan. Um, any advice for if someone's looking to just maybe start and invest in her or invest in women effort or even just a broader diversity and inclusion conversation? How, how did you do it at your firm? I mean, we really started, you know, with just all the women of our firm getting together and sharing ideas, and it was very just kind of ad hoc for the first two years, just us getting together, putting things in place. We just more recently actually finalized it and kind of put positions in place, but we did look to the CFP board um, for a lot of different ideas. We talked with different firms. You know, as we went to different conferences, we were picking people's brain. You know, if they... If they said they had a women's initiative, we were just doing a lot of kind of research and development, like what did you do, how did you start? So we really went to other people to kind of see what are they doing, how could we incorporate it, and then what ideas can we come up with? And it started with all the women of our firm. So everyone had a voice, everyone had an opinion. So a lot of what we've done have come from everyone in our operations team, compliance, marketing, uh, client service. We took everyone's thoughts. Great. Thank you, Erin. So we're just about out of time. Um, Marilyn, I'm going to turn it to you for the last question and then have you wrap up. But um, could you maybe just talk about just the center's website and, and the resources? Um, there are a few questions about, A, the copy of the slides, which we will definitely share with everyone, post this in an email. But, but if people are looking uh, for more information about promoting diversity and women in their careers, what does the center have to offer them? So I would welcome you all to go on to the Center for Financial Planning slash WIN uh, and uh, uh, the resources that we have there. I think that probably a really good place to start uh, is to download our WIN white paper. Uh, Kathleen mentioned the research. There's a lot. There are there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research that we cover in that white paper, but more importantly, uh, the um, recommended initiatives uh, for people to engage in. So I think we've got uh, a, a lot of resources as well as, as, as the research. Um, I see a question here, uh, what, are, what is the percentage of Asian CFPs? 
Uh, it's roughly the same as the um, African American and Latino, 3.5%. Uh, so um, uh, that's uh, and 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 so a lot of people ask us, well, you know, we started with our win initiative and then we went to focus on uh, racial and ethnic diversity with an initial focus on African American and Latinos. And the reason is is because that is where the real gap is. That is where the biggest gap is. Uh, but certainly there are other areas that we need to work on as well. And um, uh, so uh, thank you for that question. Um, Kathleen, is it time to wrap up? Or I, I can't see from my screen if there are any additional questions. I think we've gotten all the questions, and, and we'll go ahead and wrap up. So I'll let you close this out, Marilyn. Well, let me just say thank you to everyone who joined this webinar. For those of you who are WIN advocates and you're out there uh, spreading uh, your story, thank you very much. And please uh, feed your stories back to us uh, at uh, by emailing us at win at cfpboard.org. We really want to hear from you. And for those of you uh, who are going to be signing up, thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, the time and talent and energy and passion of our, our, particularly our women CFP professionals throughout the country uh, is just uh, uh, contagious. And I am so gratified and uh, the, uh, the, you know, spreading the word is really how we're going to really in, in, encourage young women uh, to consider this profession. And I would be remiss if I didn't close by saying that all of the programmatic initiatives, our women's initiative, our, our diversity initiatives, and everything that we're doing at the center um, is um, due to the very generous contributions uh, that we receive uh, from our sponsors, major firms across the country, large and small, as well as individual donors. And so if you are so inclined, uh, to support us, we would appreciate that financially. We'd appreciate that as well. And you can do that at Center for Financial Planning slash donate. So uh, I just want to thank you uh, for your engagement. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, spreading your stories. And, uh, and please be in touch with us and let us know how we can help. Thank, thank you, you Marilyn. Today. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Aaron, for sharing your stories. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, this concludes the webinar. We will send out copies of the slides, and we will have recorded this as well if you have interest in sharing it with other colleagues. Thank you very much, and have a good afternoon.